The quantum mechanical model explains. The reason that we see this periodic um, sequence of chemical properties is that because the number of valence electrons is periodic. And I kind of mentioned this earlier because you guys asked about it. Um, elements in the same column have similar properties. Elements in a period show a pattern that repeats. That pattern that we observe is due to the valence electrons showing similar patterns. Let's look at the noble gases. These guys are all in the same group, right? So they have similar chemical and physical properties. Um, all of these noble gases have eight valence electrons except for helium. But helium's highest occupied shell is full. It's that first shell and it can only fit, fit two electrons. So they've all got full shells up there. These guys are especially non-reactive because this is a very stable situation in terms of arrangements of electrons. Nature tends towards low energy. Boulders roll down hills. They don't roll up hills. They roll down because their potential energy becomes lower and they settle at the lowest point they can get to. Electrons also want to be in lower energy situations. When you have eight valence electrons, it's especially stable. The noble gases are very non-reactive because they're already in a really good place. So why would they want to react and mess up their electron configuration? They wouldn't. So here's another stupid analogy. The noble gases are like the in crowd in high school. You know, high school's full of all these different cliques, right? These are the super popular people that so many people wanted to be like, right? They have this look. They dress in a similar way. They act in a similar way. So the wannabes, the people who want to be in the popular group, what do they do? They, they disguise themselves, right? They dress like the popular kids. They try to act like the popular kids. They cut their hair like the popular kids, right? They try to look like one of them. Now, does that change who they are on the inside? No. You, <laughs> maybe. The, the, the element cannot change which element it is. That's the number of protons. Its personality, its identity cannot be changed. But you can change the number of electrons. You can make ions, right? So you can gain or lose electrons to look like one of these guys. So eight is like the magic number in chemistry. The atoms want eight valence electrons. Let's look at the alkali metals, group 1A. All of these guys have one valence electrons, singular, one valence electron. Look at sodium. If sodium lost that one valence electron, what would be left? The, the core electrons corresponding to neon, right? Because if we look at the electron configuration for sodium, right, sodium is neon with a three, what? Wrong button. With a 3s1 electron, right? What if neon loses this 3s1 electron? it's got the same electron configuration as neon. Sodium can look like one of the popular kids by losing that sweater that his mom made him wear. You take off that one electron, now in terms of electrons, it looks just like neon. It's still sodium though because it can't change the number of protons. The reason that all of these elements form plus one ions is because when they do that, they have the same electron configuration as a noble gas. It's a very stable electron configuration. So they're very reactive because they're very motivated to lose that electron. Any question? Let's look at the halogens. Oops, halogens. Compare fluorine to neon. Fluorine's got nine electrons, neon has 10 electrons. Fluorine's like, oh man, if I could just get one electron, I'll look like neon. Chlorine says, 
If I could just get one electron more, I'll look like Argon. Right? I'll look like one of the cool kids, and maybe they'll let me in. Right? So if chlorine runs into sodium, who's like, man, i got to ditch this electron, what's going to happen? Chlorine says, I'll take it, and poof, we have sodium chloride being formed. And that happens very easily. Both of these columns are very reactive. Because by losing electrons, the alkali metals get noble gas electron configurations. By gaining electrons, the halogens get noble gas electron configuration. <coughs> so we learned, I think back in chapter three or something, about nomenclature and predicting ionic charges for main group elements. And we just learned to count on the periodic table and kind of memorize some stuff. The quantum mechanical model explains why those elements form those ions. The group 1A elements form plus 1 ions because in doing that, they get noble gas electron configurations. Group 2A forms 2 plus ions because if they lose two electrons, they get a noble gas electron configuration. Group 7A forms a 1 minus ion because it needs to gain an electron. Group 6A minus 2 because it needs to gain two electrons. So here's our noble gases. They don't form ions because they're cool. They don't need to change. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine are all going to form minus one ions because that's more energetically favorable for them. Any questions? Does that make sense? Um, is it true to say that like everything we see besides like gases, the noble gases, is it true that everything we see is like material that's trying to React each other to be the noble gases. Um, yeah. Is it true that everything that everything besides a noble gas is interacting in a way to try to become like a noble gas? In terms of electrons, yes. Um, the quantum mechanical model, um, I just showed you how it explains ionic bonding, why some elements form ions, and then the ionic bond is just the attraction of those oppositely charged ions. We'll also see that it explains covalent bonding. Um, so many of the things around us, the wood in the bench, you know, the cotton in your jeans, those are not ionic compounds. Your body has ionic compounds in it, but also a lot of inorganic, I'm sorry, non-ionic or organic compounds. And those are formed by sharing electrons. And what the, the atoms will do is they'll share electrons with each other to achieve an illusion of that eight valence electron. And it, it's more stable, and that's why everything reacts in that way. <coughs> yeah, well, if, if you can get, stand back far enough to see the big picture, it's really pretty amazing. Any other questions? So let's look at the electron configurations of, of anions, and then we'll look at cations. So we, what we observe is that anions are formed when nonmetal atoms gain enough electrons to have eight valence electrons. In that situation, the s and the p orbitals of the valence shell are full. So the sulfur atom is going to have six valence electrons, right? Here's the electron configuration for sulfur. It's got six valence electrons. How can it get eight? How can it have eight? By gaining two more electrons. And those two more electrons will go into the 3p level and fill it up. So now we have right here eight valence electrons. And this is the same electron configuration as argon. But this is S2 minus, the sulfide anion. And we would say that sulfide and argon are isoelectronic. They have the same number of electrons, and those electrons will be arranged in the same way. Sulfide ion is not the same as argon, though, because sulfide ion has two fewer protons. We want to mess with the neutrons. Okay. So electronically, it looks like argon, but it's a charged ion. For cations, we see that the metal atom loses all of its valence electrons. And this process is always endothermic. We talk about the sodium ion, sodium atom wanting to lose an electron. 
but you still have to input some energy to pull that off of it. It's not going to fall off by itself. So let's look at magnesium. Here's the electron configuration for magnesium. It ends in 3s2. Well, if we lose those, come on, pointer. If we lose those two electrons, we get this electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. That's the same configuration as neon. But this is Mg2 plus cation. That makes sense? You can do that with all of the main group elements that form ions. So you can't have something like boron and do like, like main Well, let's look at boron. So boron is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, right? So think about what is the, the closest way. Well, boron could lose three electrons to become a three plus ion and have an electron configuration like helium. Or it could gain five electrons and be a B5 minus ion. Boron is a little atom, and it doesn't really do either. Um, carbon might be a, a little better example, so let's look at carbon. Um, so that's carbon's electron configuration. Carbon could gain four electrons or lose four electrons. It's kind of in the middle. Gaining four, losing four, either of those is a pretty big step. And carbon just generally isn't willing to do that. So I, I think of these, these elements in the middle as being those kids that they realize that, you know, there's just, there's no point in even trying. I'm so far from being cool, I'm just not even going to try. I'm just going to be myself, and who, who cares what anybody else feels like, right? You just see how, like, the body the main element is carbon. Right. And, like, in computers, it's silicon. Yeah, silicon is very important in computers because it's a semiconductor. Carbon, and you've talked, you've, you know, you've watched science fiction or read science fiction at all, you talk about carbon based life forms, right? Carbon is, is really interesting and forms so many different compounds because it doesn't form ions. It forms covalent bonds, and as we talked about in our little introduction to organic chemistry, it forms four covalent bonds. And so it can form long chains. It, it can form much more complicated molecules than most of the other elements can do. Silicon can do that to a certain extent as well. And so some science fiction writers have, you know, made up silicon-based life forms, sort of an, an analogous to the carbon. Are they good to the same for germanium, selenium, lead? Well, I mean, they have the, the thing is, when we get into silicon, silicon and germanium are both semi-metals. Carbon is a non-metal. So the semi-metals, they're kind of starting to act like metals, and metals are much more willing to lose electrons. When we get down into tin and lead, they are definitely metals, and so they don't form covalent bonds. And I think it has to do partly with their size. Yeah, it, it's, it's really interesting. Well, speaking of size, 